It's uh, a great pleasure to, to take some time out this hour and, and talk about something really unusual. The author of the book, The Braxton County Monster, the revised edition, the cover-up of The Flatwoods Monster Revealed, is, of course, Frank Fraschino Jr. Frank Fraschino has worked uh, as hard as any author, any researcher I know or have ever heard about in the field of ufology and the related disciplines therein. Frank Fischino has uh, created a, a new book, The Braxton County Monster, the revised edition, that is, is one of the most fascinating reads you will ever come across. His earlier book that we talked a great deal about, and I still mention, is called Shoot Them Down. And that is available also if you click on Frank's name in the guest section at rents.com. Uh, Shoot Them Down tells a story that uh, you will be just amazed to read about, but probably not as amazed as what is contained in the covers of the Braxton County Monster, the revised edition. Hello, Frank. Welcome back to the program. Great to be back, Jeff. Thanks for having me on. How many years have you spent on the Braxton County Monster story altogether? you ever figure that out? Uh, it's close to 21 years straight, full time. Now, that's that's not a joke, folks. 21 years straight, and he he does mean full-time, yeah, all the way around the clock uh, in terms of the calendar year. Uh, it just keeps going. Are you constantly finding more information? Um, yes, I am. And what I, I found out, Jeff, is that uh, the more I go on book tour and the more radio shows I do, more people uh, come out of the woodwork and tell me more information. It's, it's basically just filling in the gap. It's a huge I, cover-up, huge. Absolutely. Uh, the, what the government covered up in, in a couple of days took me about nearly 21 years to uncover. How? And, and someone would say, ah, the government can't do that. There are too many people involved. Oh, no. The government can do it and does it all the time. They're very, very good at it. They have uh, literally trained teams ready to go into action around the clock, as you well know. Many absolutely. of you listening may know that. They'll, they, they'll have a crash or an encounter or an event, and they will have teams in the air on the way to those locations in minutes. It's oh, literally absolutely. It's you that know, high of a priority. They were, they were starting to cover this stuff in some of the, the new documentation I found as it was occurring and the excuses and uh, where we're coming out. <laughs> right, actually, the event had not even ended yet, and they were covering it up. Amazing. Well, this is true. This is true. I'll never forget uh, Roger Lear and, and Daryl Sims were driving to L.A., and, and that, uh, that, that piece of hardware, that machine, flew right over the northwest edge of the L.A. basin and landed in the Santa Susana Mountains. Uh, it's quite a story, and they had a cover-up slap down on that within minutes. People up there, roads blocked, everything. You just wonder how they do it, but they do. Anyway... Tell us, let's take it from the beginning. Uh, we've got a lot of folks out there who don't know about Flatwoods, who don't know about the, the, uh, the whole cover-up. But I guess before we do that, how much more information is in this self-published book that was kept out of the original that drove you crazy? <laughs> uh, well, the book was poorly edited, and there was a lot of information deleted, Jeff. And, yeah. Uh, Same story. old story, folks. Same yeah, old but- story storyline and timeline was disrupted, uh, had a lot of mistakes in it. Uh-huh. Uh, the maps were mislabeled, photos were taken out. The, I had a lot of uh, head-on battles with the publisher about what should stay. You know, and Basically, uh, it took me all these years to finally get this to the point where I, I was ready to put it out to the public. It's got a lot of new information in it, a lot of new documentation, uh, Air Force documents. Um, I actually have Harry Truman's telephone memorandum for September 12, 1952, the day of the Flatwoods Monster incident, and I did cross-references to figure out what was going on at what point. And uh, I have actually added my UFO list, the reference list that gives the 102 locations. And the Hund- 102 locations. 102 oh, locations yeah. where UFOs were seen over nine eastern states on that night over uh, 21 hours of sustained sighting. That's what uh, I had looked into deeper than any 
anybody had ever come close to looking at, Jeff. Everybody looked at this Flatwoods Monster incident, which was actually, it involved the UFO crash occupant and uh, encountered a group of civilians in West Virginia on uh-huh. September 1252. Uh-huh. I went deeper and I started looking around the edges to see what was going on because you know, it's the same old adage, every story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Flatwoods was actually the end of the story. I'll and what I yeah. what I did is I started finding out that there was so much going on that night over around the United States. What I did is I would get maps from each uh, state and each region. Um, I used Project Blue Book documents. Believe it or not, the Air Force documents contained the most information uh-huh. <laughs> besides the newspapers. Hmm, how interesting. And uh, eyewitness accounts. I used everything I could get my hands on. Mm-hmm. And I started plotting these points over these different states. And before you know it, the, the map kept, kept getting bigger and bigger, more locations. Stan Friedman helped me get some uh, information. And in uh, the end, there was 102 locations. So uh, if you go on my website, plotwizmonster.com, right on the top of the homepage, you'll see an area where it says map. If you click on that, that is the master map, which was the basis for writing this book, has 102 pinpointed locations. And I've worked with several different people who actually, we coordinated and figured out what happened that night. And I actually had to retrace the steps and take this very convoluted story and put it all together. And we came up with a timeline. So I basically know what happened within a couple minutes of that whole day. That's why it took so many years to put together, Jeff. I, it, it's actually that tight. We were able to recreate the whole scenario. And it was basically an invasion of over the United States. Now, this is the same year that much of Shoot Them Down occurs. Absolutely. And, and the, the key point here is 1952 was a record year for UFO reports that were sent to Blue Book. There was 1,501 reports. Uh, Blue Book, they were in charge of the investigations and evaluation of UFO reports. And out of the 1,500 reports that year, just 303 were unknowns. And the key months where these sightings really escalated were June, July, August, and September. And we had the, uh, the press conference meeting uh, in July earlier. Just, uh, Max, is just about six weeks before the Flatwoods incident occurred. We have the shoot them down orders were revealed by the Air Force. And then a few weeks later after it was revealed about the, the shoot them down orders. And by the way, the public went nuts over that. They were hysterical. They weren't too happy about this because the orders were to shoot them down if you couldn't talk them down. Yeah. And it was pretty much in the in newspapers every day. There were sightings all over the United States, all over the world. A lot in Korea, too. The Korean War was going on. But getting back to stateside, what I discovered through all of these uh, the information I had pulled together, Jeff, is that there was four damaged UFOs that night uh, over those 102 locations. Uh-huh. I was able to decipher there was 25 different objects seen over the United States. Do we know if the Air Force was up shooting at them that night? Well, they they all came down. The poor came down and dam- damaged with pieces falling over them. And they were uh, landed in different parts of the United States. And they oh, were okay. actually uh, different, these different locations where they were going down. Uh, they were seen because what these objects were doing is they as they went down, Jeff, they were trying to get back out of the country again. And they were following the airport flight path routes. And they were, uh, when they got into West Virginia and some of the smaller locations, they were following um, rivers. They were following roads. They were crashing. They were taking off. People were seeing these things. They said, uh, You know, they're making sputtering noises, whining noises, and one object actually was reported to have backed up and started over again. These things were maneuvering and crash landing, puddle jumping from point A to point B to C, and they were trying to get out of the United States. Wow, wow. That suggests that that it might not have been 
cannon fire from jets or, or rocket fire. It might have been something else. Well, they all came in uh, within minutes of each other over the eastern seaboard. And there wouldn't have been anything in any location where you would have seen because the flight paths, if you go on my master map, all go off the coast of the United States over the air defense identification zone. That's the area where um, they would have been intercepted. This is uh, this is an invasion, but they don't appear to have done any overt offensive harm to any targets that we know about. At least not uh, that I know about. We have to take a break. Let's yeah, okay. let's get your input on that in just a minute. Talking with uh, author. Uh, and Hero, this guy has tw- 21 years of straight research. That's heroic. Frank Fashino.